there's there's an art to to the relationship and um so what i'm trying to do is not not make it science um but at least uncover what are some of those rules of thumb or those heuristics that we can we can put down on paper that say this generally works really well for our our, our clients regardless of size industry um, what have you um, and so that i can take that and share that with um, the other person on my team and then any of our future teammates um, to say listen i want you to be you be your authentic self build your own relationships and trust with the customer however I'm gonna give you some scaffolding too, so that you know it's like bumper bowling. You know, <laughs> you roll it down, and if you, you hit the side, it's cool. We got you. You know, but um, but yeah, in between, it's all it's all you. Like do your do you. So uh, that's the thing that I'm trying to crack right now, and literally like this is it. This is like I love I it. Have, <laughs> I have a flow. I have, you know, is it hard or easy for our customer along the way? Um, I'm literally working on it now. Yeah, and it's um, I've mapped our customer journey before and all that, but it's 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 a different lens and um, it's exciting and super frustrating at the same time. Of course, of course. I think too, our customer journeys or experiences are always changing. So the moment you put them out on paper, you're continuously optimizing. We are much like marketers in the way that we are always testing out certain parts of the life cycle that maybe make it into the happy path, as we sometimes call it. You talked about those inflection points that really should be happening no matter the size or the type of the customer. Um, and then deciding maybe, you know, does it make it into the happy path? Do we get rid of it? But it's so fun to be a mad scientist testing out all these opportunities to see what sticks and what works and then to operationalize a team around it.